In this video I'm going to be showing you how to get usernames and passwords from a HTTP website on a network using Wireshark. And now I'm going to treat this as if you have no experience with hacking, networking and computer science as a whole. So this is going to be completely new, there are a lot of tutorials out there which are kind of hard to follow so I'm going to try and make this as easy as possible. To start off with you need to know a little bit about Wireshark, what it is, what it does and you need to know a tiny bit about networking. So let's get into it, okay? So when you download uh, Wireshark from the description below, this is the interface you're gonna be met with. So this is the front face of Wireshark and basically what this is, these are a bunch of different networks and these are the traffic along those networks. So because I'm on a Wi-Fi connection and I'm using the same network to demonstrate this, I'm gonna double click on the Wi-Fi. So this will start bringing up a bunch of packets and these packets are little bits of broken down information. So the way that data is handled on networks, basically every chunk of data is broken down into individual packets and those packets are given a source, which is you, and a destination, which is where those packets need to be delivered. They're also given a protocol which tells the computer on the other end who you're sending the packets to how to read these packets. So if it's a HTTP packet, it tells the computer to read that packet in a certain way, rather than if it's a TCP packet, you need to read it in a different way. So the way that packets work are basically a bunch of data is broken down into packets. They're given a source and a destination. Then the packets go to the destination. The destination reconstructs those packets, puts them in order, and then it has the original data. And that's how all data is transmitted across networks. So if we choose this application data one, you'll see it went through the transport security protocol. And this is basically all the data it contains. Uh, this is hexadecimal code, and that deconstructs what is inside of the packet. So Wireshark essentially captures every packet that goes across your network. It stamps it which packet it was, the time it was collected. So we can see uh, at about one second in, we got a TLS packet, and as soon as we started it, we got an ARP packet. So we can slim this down. So if we were looking specifically for TCP packets, we can search TCP, and now we've only got TCP packets showing up because this is all the TCP packets that Wineshark has detected. Now to start this tutorial off, this is a random website that I found. The reason I've used this specific website is because it has not secure here which means the data going across this website isn't encrypted because HTTP and HTTPS are different things. So um, HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol and that's basically the internet protocol. So when you go to a website, the HTTP protocol does everything it needs to do to display the website on your ends. HTTPS is the same, but the S stands for secured, which means all the data going across that protocol is encrypted and secured, which means Wireshark can't really do much with it. So for this to work on a local network, we need to use a HTTP website um, just because that way the data isn't encrypted and it's easier for us to find the cookie, find the information and get the username or password. Okay, so let's uh, get this going. So I'm gonna go to Wireshark and I should have said this before, you can start and stop this program at any time by using this uh, to start the packet sniffing across your network and you can press that little red button to stop it. So it's started now, so it's going to leave that running. Okay, and we're going to try and log into an account. Uh, but this account, obviously I'm not having a website on this, uh, an account on this website because it's completely made up. So um, we're just going to, we're going to make up a random account which doesn't exist. So we're going to name it uh, Please don't hack me, and I'm gonna put the password. Uh, what should I put the password as? Um, I am begging you. All right. So the username is please don't hack me, and the password is I am begging you. Uh, this won't work, obviously, because it's not a real account. So we're gonna attempt to log in. My computer's being quite slow, and there you go. I'll say sorry, blah blah blah. All right. So we're gonna go to Wireshark and we're gonna stop the packet sniffing. All right, so remember when I said that you have a bunch of different protocol types or a bunch of different packets? Um, I showed you how to slim it down with a filter. So what we're gonna do is search HTTP. So 
These are all of the HTTP protocols that just happened so that we attempted the login with that website. So one of these packets will have the information that we're looking for, but we can slim it down even more because let's say there were like a hundred of these things. You don't want to go through every single one of them. So we can slim down the filter by doing HTTP dot request dot method equals equals and then we want post in capital letters and there you go that slims it down to one packet now there may be a few more packets for you if you're doing this on a different website it depends how many how many packets were needed to be created to transmit the data but luckily for me it only shows one packet so we know now that because this is a http post packet the information that we're looking for is within this so we're going to click on it and that'll bring us down to this. So if I just uh, make this a bit easier for us to read, this is everything that is inside of this packet. So this is the packet itself, and down here is all the information within it. Now we're gonna be looking for the cookie within this packet, and you've probably heard of cookies before, and I'm gonna take a guess and say you always accept cookies and have no idea what they mean. My advice would always be to decline cookies because basically they, they get information from the websites you're visiting and then they give it to another website. So let's say Facebook, for example, if you're scrolling down on the Facebook marketplace and you stop scrolling for a second and you're looking at a product, even if it's, if it's just for a second, you stop your scrolling, then carry on, that cookie will uh, record that information and store it. And let's say you decided to go from Facebook to eBay. eBay will then say, hey, have you got any cookies? And your browser will say, yeah, here you go. eBay will look at it, see that you stop scrolling and say, oh, this person's interested in this kind of stuff, let's try and show them these advertisements. So if you've ever searched something on Google or searched a product on Amazon and then later on seen ads for it literally everywhere, that's why it's because of cookies. So I would always say decline cookies. But anyway, I can see here, here's the cookie. And as I said earlier, all this is the hexadecimal information, um, which is contained within the cookie. I, again, I should have said this earlier, Hexadecimal is base 16, so it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just a base language. You don't need to worry too much about that. So what we're going to do is right click on the cookie and we're going to follow it and we're going to follow it as a HTTP stream because what this does is it allows us to look at the cookie as a HTTP protocol, which is what it was. So follow HTTP. So it'll bring up all this, and to most people, this probably looks like a bunch of random code, which uh, doesn't mean a lot. But if you look closely, you can see this is actually HTML code. So you've got the comments there at the top. Um, where is it there? You've got the doc type HTML. You've got the head tag. You've got the metadata tag. Um, so we know we're following as a HTTP stream. So if we go up a little bit, we can see um, the user agent, okay? So this part tells us what, uh, what device we're using and what browser we're using, all right? So the user agent is us. So we know we're looking at information that we have transmitted. And if we look down a little bit, we see we've got name equals please don't hack me and the password is I am begging you, right there. That's the username and password that we entered. And that's it, that's how you pack a sniff a HTTP website. So we, we can do it again. So we'll get rid of the filter and we'll start Wireshark. We'll go to this website and we'll try it again. So we'll put my username as username man88 and the password as I am very secure. Log in and let's just say for a second that this was an actual account and it did log in and now I'm looking at pictures of uh, insects or whatever this website is everywhere. So for, yeah, so for example sake, let's just say I've logged in, all right? Let's stop the packet sniff. I'm not sure why it hasn't come up with anything. Hopefully it will when I search HTTP. Yeah, it did. Okay, it's probably just because um, my computer is being kind of slow. So we're gonna go to HTTP request method post. Brings up one packet. Uh, we need to find the cookie within that packet. Right there. Gonna go to follow, follows a HTTP stream, give it a second. Uh, now it is again, username man and I am very secure. So that's it, that's how you get the username and passwords from any HTTP website. Uh, this is how people in cafes do it. So if you're ever in a cafe, you see someone with a laptop, someone with a phone out or whatever, you, you shouldn't use that public Wi-Fi. It's, it's risky.
because this is how easy it is. Anything going through public networks usually isn't secure. It's, it's most of the time through HTTP and it's not encrypted. So anybody could sit there and do this. If somebody is walking by, I've got a, a pub uh, right across from my house and th for some reason their network doesn't encrypt the data going across it. So I could theoretically packet sniff all the data that's going through them. I could try and find banking info, credit card info and all the rest of it. I'm going to make this really, really, really clear though. I'm not encouraging you to go outside, go to a cafe and get people's personal information because that's hacking and hacking, you'll probably be surprised to know, is a terrorist offence. So the law defines hacking as any access to unauthorised data. So if I got somebody's username and password, which I didn't have authorization to get, that technically is hacking and I can get sentenced as a terrorist for doing that. It's a terrorist offence. So I'm just showing you how to do it. I'm not responsible for what you do with this information. I'm not encouraging you to go out there and hack people's information. The only time where this is safe and legal if it's, it's, if it's on your own network and you've got your own permission or a, a buddy's permission or you're on an Xbox party and your friend's giving you permission. But either way, it's still illegal. So I would say don't do this unless it's on your own network. You're just trying to learn more about networking and you're testing it. Nobody's gonna follow that advice. I know that for a fact, but I'm just keeping myself safe. So that's been it. I'll leave all the links in the description below. I hope you guys found this video very helpful. And yeah, I'll see you later.